Hello everybody. It's been long since I made a video and I decided to make one today after a few months. One of this video is about hacking reality. Now let me begin by um, telling what is reality. Imagine you're sitting in a classroom with other folks and your lecture is going on, one of the lecturer, and uh, you start to drift away from the lecture session and go into a different mode of thinking, deeper, deeper, deeper. And uh, here, let's look which is reality. And most people would say that the classroom where the lecture happens, that's reality. Now, what I say is that the, if you're drifted away into a different zone or dimension, that should be the reality, not the classroom. Because you're not in the classroom. The physical entity is in the classroom, but you, your conscious level, you, you're not in the classroom. Your consciousness is, is, is in a different dimension, different thoughts. It's gone deeper. Now, why I'm talking about this? Because uh, I want to tell about what's happening now. Very dangerous, the things that we cannot reverse in any, any way. Things are getting worse. It's about the cell phones that we will discuss right now. The cell phone is a very attractive device. I, I, I mean a cell phone, what I mean by smartphones, uh, precisely, not a smartphone, because it's very smart. The, the term that has smartphone, because it's very smart, uh, obviously it's very smart, and uh, probably it's getting smarter than uh, you. That means a lot of things, but I mean a lot of things. It makes smarter than you. And it's a very convenient device for students, um, the people who do business, uh, your personal life, your day-to-day, -day, anything you, you do. This device is very convenient. So, so we think this is very necessary for our uh, ongoing lifestyle. Of course, it's, uh, in a way, it has become very the necessary part of human life. Now let's look at the other side of this cell phone. How dangerous this is this? These cell phones are mainly used for uh, data exchange. We have device to device. We send data transfer from here to there and there to here. And you access it in your smartphone very instantly. And 30 years ago, 50 years ago, this was something not even imagined. Where we get so much huge amount of data or information in your hand and fingertips. It's cutting edge technology, yes. I do not deny that. But my question here is about the microwave. For data exchange, you necessarily don't need microwaves. There are many other waves which is less dangerous. And even no danger at all. But why did they choose microwave? It's still a big question. Nobody knows that. No, no, nobody's thinking of, even thinking about it. For example, let me tell about one of the dangers. So you're talking on the phone for more than 10 and 15 minutes. <coughs> 10 to 15 minutes. And what happens to your brain? It's like keeping your brain inside the microwave oven and you cook it that's what happens the only thing is that you do not know what's happening in the brain because there are no new, uh, nervous points inside uh, outside the your brain that is inside the skull and there's no way you know the pain but your brain is being cooked Remember, your brain, a major part of your brain, is fluid. So it's easily cookable, you know? And 
there are many other damages like you know physical and mental and social it comes to and it's becoming a very very worldwide disaster especially when it comes to 5G we know about 2G 3G 4G and everyone is excited about 5G the amount of data you get that, that speed of data it's very exciting for many people but it's obviously more dangerous 5G is something which has been uh, <coughs> used as a weapon, it's been patented as a weapon to kill a large mass of people. It's, it's a weapon. Now, they're going to bring that into our mainstream social life setup, into your homes. Another problem that we're going to discuss is about um, yeah, reduced brain power due to the constant use of this uh, smartphone and the, um, you lose your um, ability to observe what we call is attention span. What is attention span? Your ability to observe a certain matter or a certain thing or a certain incident. You can test yourself. You can call up a guy or a boy or a, for a book and um, tell him to watch a two minutes or one minute video in a television or internet, I mean, a uh, computer. He won't be able to watch. After half a minute, he would get distracted. He'll be looking at that, looking at this, looking at the phone, what is looking at that, all things like that. Looking at, they can't focus because they lost that ability. It's not one. There's a millions of people who lost that ability to observe. They reduced their attention span to the level of a goldfish. You can observe a goldfish. You can. You you you're seeing goldfish everywhere now. In the tanks, and uh, you just go near them, and uh, you know, tap on the uh, glass, or you now make them observe. They cannot look at your finger from. Now they, they get distracted. Not even a fraction of a second. They look at the finger and they, they go. They don't follow you. They don't understand you. They don't notice you. Because their attention span is so small. Now, many individuals who constantly use these devices have lost their attention span to the level of goldfish. It's not, it's, it's not a joke anymore. It's something. Things that you need to think. Now, the ability to observe, destroy your creative thinking. Humans are born as a very highly creative creature. We are blessed with creativity. We can do a lot of things with creativity. Any profession, anything you do is creative. That's good about humans. Now, that element is being destroyed the ability to observe your ability to observe your ability to creatively think that also means that the ability to daydream is gone now when i say about daydream i must talk about adhd which is very popular in western community <laughs> and children's are school children's are induced with tons and tons of uh, pharmaceutical drugs uh, which alter their mind i probably say that they're destroying the consciousness you know it's destroying the creative thing the ability to create something it's been destroyed adhd do not exist these drugs are deliberately manufactured and supplied and induced into children to destroy their thinking. That is one way they're destroying your creative thinking. Another way is the cell phones. And same with the television. 
how many people are addicted to these devices? I'm not anti-technology, anti-science, or uh, anti-anything. But what I believe is that science and philosophy has to go hand in hand, and these both are complementary. I mean, more precisely, not philosophy, I'm talking about humanities. Humanities and science go hand in hand. The weightage is all, almost the same. That's what makes sense in our life, at least. And we have this addictive people from low, small age to big people who are glued their eyes into the, into the devices. They ignore the children. Children have become obese, immovable, sitting on the couch, and the parents don't notice them because they are busy with these devices. They make them uh, less than uh, something like a zombie. They lost all ability to hook up with the reality. Smartphones technically hook people using the same neural pathways, uh, same as gambling and uh, drugs. What do you say about that? And this, uh, let's look at another disaster called Facebook, which is designed to make you hooked with sprouts of dopamine. Recently, we heard uh, Mark Zuckerberg talking about uh, augmented reality meeting the real world. So all these things which I discussed a few minutes back together is actually hijacking your reality. Your reality is something you need to choose. Now they just hijacked us through different devices, different applications, different waves, frequencies, and so on. And uh, now let's talk about uh, other things coming up in the future. These, these things have been designed by the elites, and this is nothing new. This has been uh, things uh, the. Uh, all these things been existed uh, several decades ago, but this is a time that it's been implemented step by step, carefully, into people to destroy the level of consciousness, your spiritual ability. That's what spiritual ability has been destroyed. Your mental power has been pulled down where you become a subhuman. They're coming with new things like wearables and insertables. Wearables are things that you wear in your hand, like a watch or any device attached to it. You have all, everything in there. It's like a smart watch. Then you have the Google Glass, you have the cap, you have other devices attached to your clothes or whatever. All these are wearables. Now once you get used to a smartphone, uh, and all these things get um, transformed into wearables. And once you start comfortable in that, what they're planning is to induce insertables. Insertables are things they're going to put inside your body. I'm not, I, I'm not sure how many people are comfortable with that thing. They're going to insert here things in the chip over here here or in the neck or inside the brain which will totally control you you are losing your own control you're giving your control to someone else someone unscrupulous and psychopath you wanted to control the masses so they come up with this cutting edge so-called technology. And you fall into that. 
it is the, you are the one who has to decide on that how much you must you need to use it when and how and how much you should not use it why and why you should not use it it's a very important thing that you must be thinking because these people are planning to create a subhuman race which have totally reduced mental power and physical ability. They need shields who are not capable of anything except and exactly what they need. They need you something that you don't know. They want you to do something and that only that. They don't want you to do anything else. It's a kind of control that is inducing on you. So the idea is to destroy our consciousness, bring down our mental power and physical ability, and make you a subhuman, synthetic human. More precisely, synthetic human is the right word. Because there is so many things going on in the media, like the newspapers, television, uh, wherever you look, the LGBT thing. What is this LGBT thing? It's a promotion, what they're doing. There's no LGBT anywhere, actually, in, in reality. Maybe. Yes, of course, in a small way, but why it is being promoted so much in the media and celebrated as if well, you want an independence, something like that? Why? Because it's a war on sexes. I mean, uh, war on masculinity, war on femininity. Either, both of them. And I heard so, uh, they even say that uh, the current masculine masculinity of a gentleman is very threatening to the to other sexes. And the femininity of woman is not really required. So they want to cut down your masculinity, bring towards feminine, bring you towards a feminine mentality, and they're destroying the feminine side of a female and bring them to the neutral position. Now we have a large mass of population in the neutral position. They're not either man or either woman. How did they do that? It's one way to make subhuman capable of nothing. They do it through plastics. They do it through cosmetics, wet tissues that you use, food, and anything that you use on day-to-day -day life. The chemical substances Manipulate your hormones. And you eventually feel either not a man or not a woman. You feel in between. And you feel good about it. And there's so many promotions, so many support from the community, uh, support from the government, support from the corporates, support from the media. Uh, yeah, it's a good thing. That's what you feel. But you don't. What you don't realize is that you are being manipulated into that level as a synthetic human, a totally useless piece of well, This is just going on since a long time. And I don't know what's going to happen in the in the future. <laughs> this is something which you need to think very seriously. There are many ways. See, uh, this, this this video is a very generalized video. I'm not focusing on uh, 5G. I'm not focusing on plastics here. I'm not focusing on hormones, how they change the hormones. 
the conspiracy behind that and the conspiracy behind vegetarianism is another thing which I forgot to say. But vegetarianism is a propaganda. It's not something which is not required. It's, a, it's totally false information about vegetarianism. Some people choose to be vegetarian because they are empathetic to the animals, compassionate, and they understand, like, uh, really don't need it. Okay, that's okay, that's understandable. But the vegan, uh, you know, the movement or the social movement ongoing, that's totally unbelievable, and I don't know why. It's a part of this, whatever I spoke to. Now, I will be coming back with a new video on specialized, on various aspects of this video. This is a generalized video. And now I must say thank you for watching my video. I don't know if you agree with it or not, if you liked it or not, I don't know. I hope you like it. I mean, like my video as well as really like the clicking on it if you like it. <laughs> Thank you.